us to find a closed form for the recursively defined sequence. Uh, you can either do a top-down or a bottom-up approach, but based on when I've been working with uh, students in office hours, it seems like the bottom-up approach seems preferable. So I'm going to try to do that like this on the video. It seems to be uh, more, more attractive, I guess. Let's see. So a sub 0, in this problem we have a sub 0 equals 4. What would a sub 1 be? Well, a sub 1 would be the previous term that we see, which is a 4, minus n. And since we're in a sub 1, that means we're subtracting 1. So notice how I wrote this term inside of the parentheses exactly like it looks in the line above. Okay, what is a sub 2? Well, a sub 2 is the previous term minus n, which is 2, but the previous term is 4 minus 1. So instead of calculating and figuring out what this is, I'm leaving it in this form so that way I can manipulate it afterwards. What is a sub 3? Maybe one more just to get the idea here. Well, it's going to be 4 minus 1 minus by 2, and then we're going to tack on a minus 3 at the end. Okay, now the idea behind the bottom-up approach is that now we might be able to, we should be able to take a sub n and try to figure out what's going on here. So we'll know that we'll have a whole bunch of parentheses out in front, and we'll have this number 4 embedded way in the inside. Then you'll have a minus 1, a minus 2, a minus 3, and of course, 3 was the subscript, and so as we go out all the way to the end, we're eventually going to have a minus n there at the end. So what is this the same as? Well, that would be the same as the 4 that's at the beginning, subtracted by all of these different numbers, a 1 and a 2 and a dot, 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 all the way up to n. So that means our recursively, or our closed form, can now be determined. The closed form for a sub n is going to be 4, because I have to have that at the beginning, minus the sum of 1 through n, and as we discussed in class, that is n times n plus 1 over 2. So that's our final answer for the closed form. You can test it out if you wish, but that's the answer. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can do this next one on your own here, okay? Try to do a sub 0 equals 3, a sub n equals 2 times n times a n minus 1. Okay, assuming you paused and gave this a shot here, let's do it together a sub 0 equals 3. a sub 1 would be 2 times the subscript, which is 1, multiplied by the previous term, which is 3. Okay, a sub 2 would be 2 multiplied by the subscript, which is a 2, multiplied by the previous term, which is 2 times 1 times 3. And maybe one more just for good measure. a sub 3 would be equal to 2 times the subscript multiplied by 2 times the subscript multiplied by the previous term which would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 1 times 3. Okay, let's see if this is giving me a pattern for what's going to happen now for my a n. So moving into the a n step of the problem now, we're hoping that we can figure out what a n is going to look like. So a n would have a 2 multiplied by the subscript, which is an n, multiplied by a whole bunch of pieces in here, right? So let's actually look at that third step and see if we can determine what those pieces are. It looks to me like in green, what do we have? Well, we have a one copy of the two here, and then we have sort of another copy of the two here, and we have another copy of the two here. So we are getting copies of two, in fact, three many copies of two. So a n looks to me like it's going to have a two to the power of n floating around in it. Next, I see a three times a two times a one. Of course, the notation that we use for that would be the factorial, so I see an n factorial showing up and then I have that number 3 that I'll just highlight there in blue because we just have that 3 left over at the end. So as a final answer to this problem I would be saying that a sub n seems to be equal to 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of n 
multiplied by n factorial.